Hey, this semester we have been traveling through the Gospel of Mark. And if Mark only had one thing to say, if he could only get one thing across in his Gospel, this would be it. That Jesus is the promised Messiah. Advent is a season in which we prepare and celebrate the first coming of Jesus, the Messiah. But also it's a time where we wait expectantly for his second coming again. With that in mind, take out your Bibles in the pew, open it up to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, page 555. And after I read the word of God today, keep it open. I don't want to hear it back in those pew slots. Keep it open because we're going to continue to use it. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Now, before we read the word, you need to understand, before Mark wrote his gospel about the promised Messiah, there were prophets of old who were telling of the coming Messiah. And the prophet Isaiah was one of those. And if you read through the book of Isaiah, you'll, it, is, it is littered with all kinds of messianic texts about the coming Messiah. And our text this morning is one of the primary messianic texts. Hear the word of God. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isaiah, in this text, identifies four names or four titles for the coming Messiah. Wonderful Counselor, which Kate Coyman talked about on Monday. Everlasting Father, which Kate Davlar is going to hit on on Friday in chapel, and Prince of Peace, which Trigg will talk about and unpack more at the gathering on Sunday. But this morning, we get to look at the Messiah as Mighty God. Now, you need to know that term or that name in the Old Testament is reserved almost exclusively for God, the first person of the Trinity. The ones who Christian confess in the opening lines of the Apostles' Creed when we say, I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. God Almighty. And the most common Hebrew phrase or words used for God Almighty or Mighty God is El Shaddai. Do you remember that song a couple years ago, the worship song? Remember it? El Shaddai, El Shaddai, come on. El Eono Adonai, age to age you still the same by the power of your name. I think I'll stop right there. All right, El Shaddai. It's the most common phrase or words used to describe God Almighty or Mighty God. And I'll prove that. Now take your Bibles again, turn to page 11 in your pew Bibles, Genesis 17, chapter, excuse me, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, and it says this, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. Now, do you see the little F footnote be behind God Almighty? Follow it down to the bottom of the page, and it says, traditional rendering of Hebrew, what's it say? El Shaddai. Okay. Now, you would think that the prophet Isaiah, in describing the coming Messiah, would use El Shaddai when he said that the Messiah shall be a mighty God. But Isaiah doesn't use El Shaddai. He uses the Hebrew phrase El Gibor. Say it with me. El Gibor. And El Gibor, of course, is translated as mighty God or God who is mighty, but it specifically means God mighty in battle. God mighty in battle. 
And every time in the Bible that El Gibor is used, it's always used in this context. God, mighty in battle, on the side of good against the powers of darkness. Let me say it again. Every time that El Gibor is used in the Bible, it's used in the context, meaning God, mighty in battle, always on the side of good against the powers of darkness. Now, if you think of that, it means that El Gibor has a specific assignment. And the prophet Isaiah is communicating that the promised Messiah would be God mighty on battle, always on the side of good, against the powers of darkness, against the devil, against the kingdom of darkness, against this world or anything in this world, seen or unseen, that sets itself up against God and God's kingdom purposes. Now, you want to see something really cool? Mark, when he wrote his gospel, understood this. Open your Bibles up again to Mark chapter 1. It's found on page 812. Mark understood this. In fact, maybe Mark's mind was even thinking about the prophet Isaiah when he records this story. Mark 1, verse 21, starting with verse 21. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when they were in the Sabbath came, they entered the synagogue, and he taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as their scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him. Now, the literal translation in the Greek here for rebuke is Jesus attacked him. And then it goes on, and he said, Be silent. Literal translation in the Greek is that Jesus strangled him. He muzzled him. And he said, come out. And the unclean spirit, convulsing the man, cried out with a loud voice and came out. Do you get the picture? Jesus, the Messiah, El Gibor, mighty God in battle against the powers of darkness. The first story that Mark records is this battle going on between Jesus, the Messiah, the promised Messiah, and the powers of darkness. And that's what Jesus has come to do, to destroy the works of the devil, as the apostle John records. And he's done that. In his first coming, Jesus, through his death and his resurrection, his ascension, has defeated the devil. The devil is neutered. He has no power but the power that we give him. And the power, as we've talked about this before, is in the lie that he whispers in each one of our ears over and over again. Lies like you're not pretty enough. Lies like you're not strong enough. Lies like you're not thin enough. Lies like you're not spiritual enough. Lies like nobody likes you. Lies like nobody would even dare think of marrying you. Lies like it was your fault that your mother's an alcoholic. Lies like you'll never be forgiven for your sexual past. All the lies that the devil continues to plant in our minds, and the only power that he has is when we begin to believe that those are true. And Jesus, El Gibor, has come to do battle with the devil and his lies. And he does it through speaking truth. And Jesus, the one who said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Truth is what dispels the power of the lies that the devil tries to plant within us. So here's the question. Here's the question. Where do you need Jesus, the Messiah, El Gibor, God mighty in battle, to do battle in your life right now? Where do you need him to do battle for you? I know there's some of us right now 
who are dealing in the battle of pornography. And I would say pornography, and I'll use the term right here in chapel, uncontrolled masturbation. There's some of us here who need El Gibor to do battle with us in that area. And there's some of us here who drink way too much. We drink way too much. And it leads us to make a lot of bad decisions sexually as well as how we treat one another and how we look at one another. We need Jesus, El Gibor, to do battle in our lives with us. And there's some of us here who are we're dealing with eating disorders. And there's a lot of reasons for it. But we need to cry out to Jesus, the Messiah, El Gibor, mighty God, to do battle in that area with us. And there's some of us who are carrying way too much shame and guilt, bitterness from past issues, whether with family or friends. We got so much resentment built up, so much unforgiveness going on in us, and it's killing us from the inside. We need to cry out to Jesus the Messiah, El Gibor, mighty God, to do battle in that area with our lives. So where is it for you? We each have them. And so let the great promise today, knowing that Jesus, the Messiah who has come and is coming again, will continue to do battle against the works of the devil until that time when he comes again And he will put the devil away. And there will be a new time, a new kingdom, a new reign. But until that time, let us cry out to El Gibor to do battle for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are a wonderful counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace, but also mighty God, mighty in battle, on our behalf. We bless you. Thank you, God, that you do not put us alone in this world, but that you are with us at all times. Let this be a great word of encouragement for each one of us today. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.